What do you feel like chatting about tonight, Raylene? It doesn't have to be, like, energy is such a, like, vague and broad topic, but it's, I mean, everything is energy to me, so... What's going on in your world that you feel like you would like to chat about that's like coming up for you or just something on your mind or something you want to share a perspective on? I was I was giving some examples of things. Uh, I am only here for a few minutes. I got to dance. Ooh, dance it up, Raylene. So I can't, I don't know if I, I think I've told you this. I have been doing a static dance uh, in community with people since I was in Oregon. So like for the past maybe six months or so, but I've been doing it like on my own for years and I just didn't realize what it was. So it's so funny people are like, oh, you're new to a static dance. I'm like, not really. I've been doing it for a hot minute. <laughs> if anybody is in here that has done a static dance or been a part of a, a static dance community, I'd love to hear um, what that's like for you and what dance is like for you expression whether you're learning a dance routine or you're just expressing yourself openly um for me it has been really really fun because i go in not knowing what i'm gonna do and it's like full improv i'm just allowing my body to just move and do whatever it feels like so for me it's super helpful to move a lot of energy in my system um, like let's say earlier in that week I like was super upset about something or I was like angry or I was crying or whatever It kind of helps me like shake loose any residual feelings around that um, And sometimes it brings up some stuff too <laughs> If I'm feeling like kind of insecure or something like that that day that'll come up That'll come up big when I'm dancing I need the opposite someone boss me around and tell me exactly what to do and how to do it get it get it get it that's why i like the different versions of dance because like if you're making decisions all day um like you are raylene i know you have a lot going on you're like making decisions and choices and well sometimes it is just nice to go into a dance class and be like we're learning this <laughs> hey do you want to box i want to show you my drawings dalton Ooh, fun 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 i you know what remind me toward the end if you're in here or maybe send me a direct message uh, i want to check out do you post videos about your drawings because i would love to um go and check out videos afterwards and see what your drawings are all about i love looking at people's art on here that's like one of my favorite things to do on this app is see all the different types of art people are making so so fun but yes dance Dance, dance, dance. We were talking about a static dance. Uh, actually, a lot of the songs that I have in my playlist tonight, I've done a static dance to, and it's fun. Just on my own, because uh, I, I do it on my own. Sometimes I go to a park with headphones, and I'm just <laughs> moving around, not doing any set choreography, just moving around however it feels good. That took me a hot second to get into that mode. I don't know about the rest of you, but like I, for the longest time, I was like so scared of being judged by other people. Of like, oh, what are they gonna think? Are they gonna think I'm crazy? Are they gonna think I'm what? At this point, I'm just like, whatever. Like one, I'll probably never see these people again, right? Whoever's at the park. But two, what's wrong with being a little different, right? So, so now I just like to wear headphones uh, and go <laughs> dance around and spin around at a park um and connect with the trees if there's a water feature nearby that's really fun and helps me get into the flow of dance too dance for me is learning to trust my body and therefore myself Ooh, what's up what's up raylene i dig the like lessons we can learn from different things and i know too this is because i know you raylene but i know you've like added different dances to what like what you're doing so like Irish dance and then ballet and then, is it clogging maybe? Um, but you keep adding in new ones. So I'm curious if you have time, you don't have to uh, share if you don't want to, but like, um, like how you decide when you're gonna add a new one and also when you do, do you notice any thing that comes up for you with that? I know for me anything, I anytime I try something new, I get a little bit like nervous at first, but I'm also super excited. So, I've been drawing for four years. Sweet Dalton. Okay, I wanna see, I wanna see the drawings. I'm actually like 
uh, figuring out and playing with watercolor right now, which I know is so different than drawing, but that's a fun thing to try. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, watercolor is so hard. And I'm like, I don't know. I just call it a challenge. <laughs> yes, girl, ballet was a hard one. <laughs> Yes, yes. And ballet has such a history too. Like it's so, when I think of ballet, I think of the rigidity of it, even though it has this flowy nature, like there's kind of this rigidity to it that I, that comes to mind. But, but it doesn't have to be the case, I don't think. Like you can engage with ballet in a very flowy way too, if you want, um, while holding the poses. I don't know. I don't know much about it, but my dad helps me. Cool, you get to do like a like a dad kiddo combo thing. That's awesome. That's so cool. There is so much with tradition, but there are so many cool schools challenging tradition. Yes, let's go. Let's go. I think that's the case a lot for like adult education courses and classes too, or anything that I'm trying as an adult. There seems to be this like not everywhere, but there seems to be this like emphasis on like having fun or being playful with it, not judging yourself, like just go and try, which I think is really cool. Um, yes. See, I love you. Bye, Raylene. Is anyone else trying something new now or recently that has kind of pushed you a little bit? I'm curious about this. Ooh, Dalton, what else you got going on? You've been drawing for four years and are you trying something new that's like pushing you a little bit? I'm curious uh, if anyone else that's in here wants to share too, uh, if you are pushing yourself a little bit in what you're trying. Uh, watercolors is something new for me that I haven't tried before that I'm just jumping into and seeing how it goes. Um, I have my friend's drum uh and it's a big one i actually don't know what kind of drum it is i think it is a drum from ghana i think if i remember correctly and um i'm excited to try but I, I don't know anything about it so i'm just gonna play the drum and just see what happens and probably look up some youtube videos and all that stuff so trying that i have been doing chorus Ooh, using your voice that's awesome dalton so like are you all singing specific types of songs? Or do you get to play with it each time you go? What is that like? And has anything come up for you with that? Like when you started chorus, were you nervous about it? Or did you just jump in and were like, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, see, so I mentioned two things that I'm doing. So the watercolor piece is uh, something that I'm trying that's brand new to me. And also the drum piece. And both of those are very solo, I've noticed. I'm just like picking up on that right now. I could bring my drum and the watercolors out and do it in public. So it's a little bit more like people could see what I'm doing. Um, but both of them are pretty, I could just do it this in this apartment and no one would know. So that's interesting. I'm just noticing that. I'm not judging it, I'm just noticing that. Um, oh my God, I was so nervous, but I've gotten really good at it. Let's go. I love how you jumped in and even though you were nervous, you did it anyway. That's kind of a really beautiful thing. I don't know if this is what you've noticed, Dalton, but anytime I start something and I'm nervous, especially like going live, like sometimes like this um, makes me a little nervous and I do it anyways. And then the more I do it, the more it feels comfortable, the more I trust myself. Raylene, who's no longer in here, she went and she's off dancing right now. Um, but she was talking about how she was trusting herself more with dance. And I think any time that I try something new and I'm nervous about it, I like start to trust myself more and more. I layer on more and more of like, oh yeah. So, so if something comes into my experience that I've never done before, but all of a sudden it's in front of me and I'm like, am I gonna run or I'm gonna do it? I have more built up in my system, like give it a go. Let's see what happens. Um, and I've been going to drawing classes. Ooh. Okay, I have another question, Dalton. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, we're talking about different things we're trying that are kind of pushing pushing us a little bit. Um, and Dalton's talking about drawing classes and chorus. And I'm curious, Dalton, with the 
drawing classes, are you learning different techniques? Do you have to show your work to people? What is that all about? Because that's another thing too, like depending on the type of new thing we're trying, if there are other people around, there's more things that can come up for us, right? Like, oh, are they judging me? Are they like, am I gonna compare myself to other people? Like there's so many layers to that. Shading, okay. So you're taking a drawing class and learn it and doing some shading work. That's cool. That's really cool. I like to combine, so I'm, I've done a little bit of watercoloring this, thus far. I like doing watercoloring, but then using like a very, very fine tip marker and kind of like doing some of that within the watercolor to kind of give it that stark line. And it kind of is um, incorporating multiple, uh, what would you call that? mediums, I guess. So the paint, the watercolor paint and the marker, the fine, fine tip marker, super, super fun to play with. And the marker too, like watercolor is somewhat forgiving when you still, when it's still wet. So you can move stuff around a little bit. The minute you go in with that marker and you're like, Burp, it's like, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> That's just gonna be what it is. That's how that piece looks now. Can I see some of your work? So I don't have any of my work right here within um, within uh, grabbing. And I'm trying to think, I don't even know if I have any of it not kind of like put in a box right now. I travel a lot. I don't know if you were in here uh, when I was explaining that, but I, um, I travel a lot. So sometimes my stuff is in, in bins and boxes and I haven't unpacked it all. So, it might be there, but I might make some uh, YouTube, I might make some TikTok videos about it and we'll see. Cause I have some light language um, kind of ideas percolating and things that I wanna create with some light language in my watercolor and my marker art. So um, I might put some of that on TikTok so y'all can see. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, anything that people want to chat about tonight Energy wise, um, I'm an energy empowerment guide that just anything is energy, but a lot of what I do, instead of giving people answers, which is, there's a lot of those services out there of like, oh, I'm gonna read your tarot or I'm gonna do this or whatever, and they're giving you answers. Um, I'm more walking alongside people as they're making big energetic shifts in their life um, in an empowering way. So, I come on here to chat with people and to let them know that their perspective matters. So anything people write in the comments, like I do not invalidate, even if it's very, very, very different than my perspective. Um, I prefer to share my perspective and say it's mine and then say, and I'm glad you have yours. So that's kind of what this whole conversation is about when I go live is, is doing a lot of that. So cool, yeah. <laughs> I like, I like the emojis, that's sweet. Um, okay, there's a few. Hello. Oh, I see Becca again. Becca, hello, hello. We've been chatting, so thus far we've been chatting about um, things, new things we're trying in our life that are stretching us and um, that are kind of pushing us outside of our comfort zones. So I was talking about how I'm trying watercoloring and um, drumming. Like I have a drum in my living room right now that a friend let me borrow and I've never played the drums before. It's like a, it's a wooden kind of like big tall drum and I've never played anything like that before. So just pushing myself beyond and a few people were sharing, they're taking a drawing class, they joined a chorus taking different dance classes. So yeah, it's kind of how this conversation is starting is, is in what ways are we pushing ourselves? But also I think there's different ways we can push ourselves without trying like a new hobby or something, right? Like we can literally just like sit with our discomfort of like a feeling <laughs> and be like, ah, <laughs> what is this feeling? And can, how long can I sit with it? How long can my body withstand the discomfort? You are so amazing and awesome. Dalton, I, okay, I'm just gonna take a second to sit with that 
and allow that to sink in because I'm working on uh, accepting compliments. And I will also say that my perspective on, on this type of thing is you, what you see in me, you're able to see it because it also exists in you. So the amazing and awesomeness that you're sensing, um, you wouldn't be able to pick up on it unless it existed in your in your field, in your body, in your your essence as well. So I just wanted to reflect that right back at you um, as well. I tried air dry clay and it did not go very well. <laughs> Becca, air dry clay. Okay, I'm curious. What about it didn't go well or like, I was talking about this a little bit earlier before you jumped on about how when I try new things, there can be this uncomfortable feeling, especially if I'm not doing it how I deem correct right away. There could be some self-judgment and, but I'll often shift back into play really quickly. And I'll just be like, all right, um, that, that was learning. <laughs> I was clearly learning in this instance and that's fine. Um, but when you tried the dry clay, the air dry clay, what came up for you with that? Oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna catch up on I'm gonna catch up on some comments. We need more people like you. You know what, Dalton? I think there are a lot more people like open and accepting and loving um, than we realize. I keep running into more and more people with very open hearts and very um, just holding space for others in really beautiful ways. And I, I, for the longest time, just didn't think that was that was much of what consisted of, of the reality here, but I am finding the more I am opening up to my own self-love, the more I'm seeing it in other people. So yeah, I think there's there's a lot, a lot of us out there and we're just kind of doing our thing, you know? I'm tearing up, aw, you are great. Oh, thank you, thank you, that's so sweet. Um, Let me see. It did not come out as expected. Now I know I need to start small and work up. Let's go. So you learned some stuff, which is awesome. <laughs> I just also switched my, hold on. There we go. Um, you learned some stuff, which is cool. Yeah, I think I'm always in this like learning and growth mindset, which I've had for a really long time. I don't know where I picked it up or where I learned it. Like from a little kid on, I've always been like, okay, what did I learn? What did I learn? What did I learn? What did I learn? Like that's just been my MO for the longest time. So it's so helpful. Like even if I, um, I'm just trying to think here. Oh, something I'm doing uh, soon that is outside of my comfort zone is I'm tabling for my business at a live event. And I haven't done that. I've done that on behalf of other people before. I've tabled before, been to events and festivals and whatever, helped other people with their stuff. Um, but I've, I haven't done it for myself. And there's a part of me, I know, I know that I'm gonna learn so much, right? Like it's not gonna go perfectly that very first time. So I'm just gonna be like, I'm going in with the mindset of, there's a lot for me to learn here and um, paying attention to what I notice. <laughs> I guess is kind of how I'm going about it. We'll see, we'll see what I pick up on. I'll report back once I do that. Oh, I feel like I missed somebody. How do I hold my energy together as an empath? Chloe, let's go. I dig that question. Okay, so if you're new to this type of live and you're not used to kind of how I do things, um, I'm a curiosities and perspectives person. I'm less, um, I'm less about just like giving an answer and leaving it at that. So I love hearing other people's perspectives on this. So other people, if you wanna chime in in the chat, um, and give your perspective on what Chloe asked. Um, again, they asked, how do I hold my energy together as an empath? I think um, we spark each other in a lot of beautiful ways. So just having a collective answer this would be like super rad if anybody's up for it. Um, holding my energy together as an empath. I guess for me, because I also identify as an empath and sense, uh, like energy sensitive person, for me, I shifted my perspective from like overwhelm because that's kind of what I was like going into the world. Anytime I left my house, I was like, I'm going to be overwhelmed. I'm going to pick up on everything. And that was just what I assumed. And then that was my experience. 
<laughs> like every day I was like, this is a lot. And because I was labeling it as, as a lot, it was, right? So I started, this isn't gonna be the answer for everyone and it's not gonna be the answer um, that's a complete, right? This is one component that worked for me is reframing it as more of a, um, it's a gift, it's a superpower, and it's also something that I can put boundaries around. Um, we talked about this a little bit last live. I can go into it a little bit. I don't like to use the term energy protection. I like to use energy boundaries. So when it comes to being an empath, like, and if you're picking up on a lot of stuff and you're just feeling uh, overwhelmed, there are certain boundaries that you can put up and just having an intention and mindset around that be like, okay, right now I am focused on XYZ, whatever it is, if you're going on a walk with a dog or a friend or whatever it is, like this is where my focus is and um, and uh, any other like energy or things that I would be typically picking up on, I'm going to say you get to wait, <laughs> right? And for me, it's been a muscle, like me doing this right out of the gate didn't produce results like immediately. I still had beliefs running through my system that overwhelm, overwhelm, gonna pick up on everything, ah, right? It took me a hot second to really work through um, some of those beliefs that I had about my own empathy and my own sensitivity to energy. Um, but I, but so that's my perspective on that. Uh, what are other people saying in the comments? I'm gonna read some of them out loud just so we can kind of have a group share here. Um, okay. Let me scroll, let me scroll. Bye Dalton, if you if I missed you, I love you too. Um, I always practice putting up a protection bubble and lately I've been carrying around tourmaline. Ooh, crystals, let's go. I'm so glad you brought that up, Becca. Uh, Becca is moon baby, for those of you looking in the comments right now. Um, yes, I wear shungite a lot as well. So find if, if um, for me, stuff like that, these are tools, right? And they, um, they hold certain energetic frequencies and all that from my perspective. And so for me, Shungite, I've kind of used as a tool and it's not necessary. It's not something you have to have, but I've used it as a tool to help with my energetic boundaries. It sounds like, um, Becca, that you've done some uh, protection bubbles, which are awesome. I've done those as well. And then the tourmaline. I would love to know more about tourmaline. I don't know a ton about that crystal. So if you want to share, uh, I'd love to hear what are other people talking about. Let's see. I let people hold their own energy instead of holding it, absorbing it from them. Yes, that's another huge aspect of that as well is like recognizing your role and your maybe... Um, I know for me, there's been large periods of my life where I felt like if I'm feeling this, this, this means that I have some sort of obligation to, to address it. <laughs> but I was the only one creating that for myself, right? I was the only one like creating that obligate, like there was no one else around me being like, you have to. <laughs> you have to deal with it, right? Like I was creating that. And so recognizing that I actually get to choose what I interact with. I get to choose um, and I have power in that. So I love that you brought that up, Becca. That is a, that is a huge part of my practice as well. Um, let me see, let me see. As a healer, making sure to save a certain percentage of energy and not giving it all away to help. That's huge piece too, I dig that. Um, if your like perspective is kind of like, an awareness of your energy and kind of like um, seeing it as uh, it fluctuating and things like that, knowing yourself well enough to be like, mm, coming to a close, <laughs> you know? I think that's super rad and it feels like a very empowered uh, way to go about that for sure. I think for me, another aspect is when I'm doing energy work and energy work is very vague and broad, but like in general, like slinging magic and whatever, right? Um, I am pulling from like source energy and things that are like, there is no uh, limit there. It is just continuous. Um, and so that is something that I've learned that if I forget to do, then I feel like super, super drained. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap. That was like, 
that yeah and also like I'll know if I get really drained I have pushed it too far I went farther than was than I was necessary or like for my highest good I guess I'll say do y'all hear the song in the background right now hold on let me let me turn it up for a second I'm sidetracked it's secret tunnel <laughs> okay sorry distracted so the basics of being shielded and mindful and not focused on the overwhelming energy so focused yeah and you know what you know what chloe i know the self-focused thing this is just what's coming up for me right now it doesn't mean it applies to you but maybe it'll apply to someone else who's in here self-focused can, can feel very selfish especially if you're an empath and energy sensitive it can be like oh i'm focused on me but i want to be of service i want to help and being so self-focused feels selfish and feels wrong. Like, I definitely have had to work through and I'm still working through some of those beliefs of like, taking care of me is not selfish, <laughs> you know? Like, making sure I'm good um, is better for me. And it's also better for anyone that I'm in contact with and, and serving, especially if I'm doing my work, right? It's that whole, you know, example that's been over said and overstated, but the the oxygen mask thing right i'm putting on my own oxygen mask and then i'm helping somebody else so that's kind of how i i see that um let me see this is a peaceful space oh i dig that you are here fluff around and find out <laughs> did you just hear my secret tunnel song uh it's like ah uh, that's what i that's the vibe that i try to give off you know Doing a little bit of that ah. and goofiness so darkness heaviness too light Ooh. if you want to say more about that maybe you already did maybe you clarified more and i'm just like catching up um i'm creating art right now who's creating art right now fluff around and find out is what kind of art are you creating? We were talking about that a little bit. Someone was drawing. I'm starting watercolor painting just to see what was happening. Someone's talking about dry air, clay creation, like super rad. Um, I'm in tune with my creative self right now. Let's go. That's like, honestly, when I'm creating in an artistic way, especially with my hands, the energy flow and the ideas for other things come in a ton i know that's not the case for everyone but for me if i'm like feeling a little bit stagnant in some of my creative ideas for other things in my life i'm like all right i'm gonna color <laughs> i know it'll bring up something it might not be the exact answer that i'm like looking for but it's gonna bring up something um put on your mask for helping others exactly yes you probably said it uh you probably wrote it in the comments before i said it but yes exactly um, sorry, darkness to light was about tourmaline. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Tourmaline. I'm gonna have to look at what color is that? Is it another black crystal? Because the black ones on here are shungite. And this earring right here is shungite. I wear a lot of shungite. I like my shungite, um, crystal. I work with it a lot. Um... I'm a fan. I'm doing circuits work. What is that? What is that, Chloe? I want to know more. Black. Okay. You know what's funny? Anytime I get new crystals in my life and they look similar to another one and then I put it in a bowl and they're all intermixed, I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> I don't remember which is which. It's, it mainly happens with the black crystals where I'm like at one point I had the little card you know how you go to a metaphysical shop and they'll give you the little card like this is what this means blah, blah. cool right well the minute I put it in my little crystal bowl I don't know which one's which <laughs> electronic circuits building electronics gizmos with micro okay electronic circuits building little electronic gizmos with micro circuits and wire and such that is so cool chloe that is so cool are you like specific types of gizmos or are you just playing around and seeing what happens that is so how'd you learn how to do that 
I have forgotten what all of my crystals do, <laughs> right? I kind of, so it, because I have a bowl that I put them in and I've been doing this for years, it kind of fast tracked me into using my intuition when I work with crystals. Um, I mean, Shungite I work with a lot and so that's just, you know, it's one I wear almost every day. I would say actually every day. I wear this dangly earring all the time. Um, but, but, but it helped me like, instead of being like, okay, I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to like use the wrong crystal for the wrong thing. I would just intuitively pick from the bowl. I'm like, okay, <sighs> when I'm going about my day today, which, which is a nice crystal to have in my pocket, which one wants to co-create with me today? And I'll stick my hand to the bowl and I'd grab one. So it really helped bring out some more empowerment <laughs> for myself instead of like second guessing and being like, oh no, like for me, my body is such a big indicator of what like feels aligned and what doesn't. I get a lot of signals going on my body. So if I pick up a crystal and I'm like, ah, not today. Doesn't mean the crystal's bad. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the crystal. Just, that's not gonna work for me today. So I'll put it down, pick up another one. Oh, yeah, this one feels like it wants to work with me today. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Playing around, let's see. Playing around with stuff. Dad taught me to mess around and don't be afraid to try things. Yes, Chloe, we were talking about that and how trying new things, especially new hobbies and just having different things in our lives, like is such an empowering way, especially if it's like low stakes. Like I'm doing, like I'm playing this new drum in my apartment, like no one's gonna see it unless I decide to share it on TikTok or whatever, but it's so low stakes, but it helps me kind of like, you know, be less afraid to try uh, new things in my life. And so when I am like confronted, like if I'm, let's say at a gathering with friends or whatever, and someone's like, oh, you wanna do Slackline? And I've never done Slackline, but it's like, okay, sure. Yeah, I'll give it a go. Maybe, maybe I am not the best at it right off the bat. Okay. <laughs> I've already tried enough new things that I know how that kind of goes, right? Like the first few times I'm probably gonna fall off the Slackline. <laughs> That doesn't mean I'm a bad person or I'm crummy or whatever. Quartz, I work with every day myself since it's the timing crystal a lot of stuff uses. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. That's so cool. How do you work, do you like have it in like a, a point or um, a point crystal? You know, the ones that have the little point on the end, they're kind of long um, or what does yours look like? I'm just getting into specifics. Now I'm just curious. I love when people paint me a picture of like how they go about things. Um, okay. Let me see. Let me see. Love quartz. Yeah, yeah. I also like selenite. I don't have the like super pure like selenite plate type stuff that's like kind of, um, it's very brittle what I've found. I've been around selenite plates before and like the selenite, the like very pure selenite. Um, I have, what is the, what is the other one? Something spar? Now I can't remember, but it's like a different variation of selenite, but I like uh, working with selenite as well. That one's fun. I've, it's been interesting when I've had a headache, this was years ago, and I like rolled a selenite like wand thing over my forehead, it like relieved the headache really quick. I was like, huh, it's not the case every single time I have a headache. Sometimes my body's like, I need water. <laughs> okay, this is why I have a headache. Cool, 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 cool. Got it, got it. <laughs> um, but it's been interesting. Sometimes selenite and different crystals and different energies and different frequencies can assist with certain things. So it's super rad. Dang right, let's go. So good to see you too. Remind me, I recognize your username. Add their pain, add our pain. I can't remember your actual like name and you don't have to say it. Some people really don't like saying their, um, their name on TikTok and that's fine. But I recognize your username from when I used to go live. Selenite dissolves in water, yes. <laughs> Don't put your selenite in water, folks. <laughs> that is one thing that I have learned with my crystals. 
I actually don't put any of my crystals in water just because I haven't done enough research with the ones that I have to be like, which one can go, which one cannot. I know some people do put crystals, certain crystals in their drinking water. Um, there are even water bottles out there with that, which is super rad. Um, but yes, there are certain crystals you should not put uh, in liquid for sure. They're like, no, thank you. I do not enjoy. Yes, I miss your lives. Well, I'm glad you're here now. I'm glad you're here now. The vibe is a little bit different. As you can tell, we're talking about energy and it's, um, I mean, I'm same, same wit as far as like my face. Um, but my, I've changed a lot over the past year. I used to go live, maybe it was a year, year and a half ago. I'd go live like five times a week and, um, yeah, I'd say I've changed a lot over the past year or so and uh, in really big growth and expansive ways and uh, been working a lot on my heart and having openness and acceptance uh, more for myself and then an extension to other people as well. I feel like that's been a strength of mine for a while, but I've been really like leaning into that more and, and the possibilities with that. Like, can I meet people with, with polar opposite views of me and meet them with love. Is that possible? Can I do that? Um, and so I've, I've been playing with that the past year or so and just seeing, um, seeing what I'm capable of, I guess. I would love to know how you have been doing energetically lately. <laughs> Are you very aware of everything that's going on energetically, Becca? I know a lot of people are talking about the different, I mean, we talked about this a little bit last week too, but there's a lot just energetically going on. Um, and in, from my perspective, I've made a video about this, like the energies will always be energying, right? Like we're noticing and we're picking up on in different fluctuations. And so sometimes like, oh my gosh, the energies are crazy right now. Um, but for me, they're always doing their thing. So it's just a matter of like, what are we tuning into at any given moment and how it's, how it, like is affecting us and what's coming up in our system. For me, I would say since this, since last live, so a week ago, I've been way more, I'd say like consistent in my days, like sleep wise and stuff. I don't remember if I mentioned this the last live, but I was like my sleep schedule and everything was all over the place. Like I was up until 2 a.m., past 2 a.m. a lot and that is not my norm. And, um, and this past week has been less of that, although it has, you know, fluctuated a little bit. It's been interesting too. I haven't, um, or I've been noticing some anger stuff coming up in me in different ways that I'm recognizing that I have abandoned self. So anytime I experience the emotion of anger, um, I really like to pinpoint what within me is going on and, and, less of the external pointing, right? For me in the past, it's been really easy to be like, you make me feel like this and you're blah, 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 right. And that's, I think that's part of, it can be part of the process, but for me, I don't like to stop there. I like to really look at, okay, why is this scenario, this person, whatever, the, what was said, whatever, bringing up this like anger in me, or maybe no one said anything or nothing happened. And all of a sudden I'm just feeling, mm -hmm pissed right like why so that's been interesting the past um couple days there's been certain things for me to look at um and i found and i kind of mentioned this right off the bat is like there were there are ways that i was abandoning myself that i was really pissed about and i didn't recognize i was and then i finally recognized it and i get to a place of love with myself around these things but the first initial reaction and response was anger. <laughs> so, you know, we're all learning and growing. I don't like to come on here and like pretend like I have everything together, right? I am just in it, in the thick of it as anyone else here. If you are an energy worker, light worker, healer, anything like that, I can tell you everybody you see on TikTok and beyond is working through their own shit. <laughs> Whether they are upfront about it or not, um, you know, that's their own journey and their own, you know, preference and how um, maybe vulnerable they get online with people. But I just like to be very upfront and honest. Like, yeah, I'm in the thick of it with the rest of y'all. I figured out some stuff along the way that I like to share, 
but I'm also learning. <laughs> I am also very much a student and a teacher at the same time. Um, that is amazing. Okay. Ooh, thanks for being so vulnerable. Yes, love that you explore the roots of the concerns. Yeah. How are y'all? How are y'all feeling? Those of you who are in here. Also, thank you for the the hearts and the taps of the screen. I so appreciate that. Um, how are y'all feeling energetically these days? What's going on with you? Especially Becca, I know you were in here with me last week. Um, how are you feeling energetically? <laughs> Cause this is from my experience and the people that I'm talking to and working with, it is hitting people on different levels right now. Um, and people are having unique experiences. I made myself into a square again. There we go. I'm just keeping everybody on your t on your toes. You never know what shape I'm gonna be in in this live. Um, I resonate with the anger for sure. I've been a bit down lately. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so interesting. Um, and I I've definitely had some themes come back around. I've had some interesting dreams. Some people from my past that I have not thought about in years come up in dreams. Um, and that was somewhat tied to the anger, I think. And um, what I noticed, at least for the specific dream that I'm referencing, is it wasn't a, oh, you need to process this and like, oh, that's a huge thing. Well, it was more of a, kind of a closing like hey we're closing this period um we're tying a bow um and it's just kind of allowing my physical body and my physical mind to be aware that we're like closing that up and i was like okay because i just remember waking up from the dream being like what the heck why are why is that person in my dream right now <laughs> so funny so funny and then i thought about it and then i really like dug in i i tuned into it i was like oh I don't need to be worried about it. Um, it's just it's just a closing of a chapter. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I feel like the energy in October is off this year. Feel weird. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things going on right now. There's a lot that's coming up for a lot of people. And so, um, what is what does the feel weird to you mean? Is it does that mean something specific to you? Also, I have not drank my tea at all. Hold on. Ooh, lukewarm tea. <laughs> okay. I've been working through dissociation and staying present without avoidance. <sighs> that, thank you for your vulnerability, Becca. Um, yeah. I, who that hits, that hits. So thank you for saying that, cause I, um, the avoidance piece, I have a daily practice of journaling, so I like to think that I'm not avoiding much, but there has been some sneaky stuff that I realized I was avoiding. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, okay. And like trying, trying my absolute best not to judge myself for it, right? Like there is like this protective piece of like, mm, if we if we look at it, it's gonna hurt. Okay, that could be the experience. And also if we lean into it and we actually look at it further and we push through it and pu push past it, like wh what comes after that? That's been my journey anyways. I'm not saying that has to be yours or is your journey, but the avoidance piece, yeah, that has come up for me too. Um, let me see, let me see, Amanda's in here. And Amelia's in here. Oh my goodness, we we're just talking. We're being very vulnerable at the moment. <laughs> you hit you hit it on a vulnerable moment. So thanks for coming in and chatting. Uh, just the energy has been. Oh wait, hold up. Just the energy has been weird. It's usually lovely in October. A lot of emotions. Yeah, it's it's hitting people on all sorts of levels. I know I keep saying that, but it's um, for me, and then I'm just gonna share what I'm picking up on. It it's kind it feels like it's like okay look at your stuff whatever it's emotions things you've been avoiding like we've been talking about whatever it's time to look at it and emotions are coming up and like 
thoughts and feelings, certain people coming back into your awareness. And it's like, ah, right? Like, it's really just putting it at the forefront um, of our awareness. And then we get to decide what we do with it, right? And that's where the empowerment piece comes in. Um, I am not one to say, you should do this, or you have to do this, or you have to look at your shit or whatever, right? For me, I've found it's very empowering to do that because I know what comes after typically. I don't know the specifics, but I know I'm more expansive and I'm more, I feel more me and I feel more heart-centered when I do that. Um, but I'm never gonna tell somebody, <laughs> right? You must feel your emotions in this way at this time, right? Um, so yeah, it's it's really just each individual's choosing their own path with this uh, this month. So it's 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 an interesting time for sure. Oh hi, funny running into you here. I can hear it in your voice, Amanda. <laughs> I can hear that sentence in your voice. <laughs> I don't know if I did a really good impression of you, but I can hear that. Amanda is in the uh, energy exploration community gathering. Um, that I do twice a month with me and we get to have fun and explore different energies together and learn a lot from each other. So, and chat about our animals and pets in our lives uh, when we're not meeting, that's been fun too. Your, your, is it one kitty? Yes, one kitty in your life is so cute. Yeah, I've been finding it difficult to sit with it too. Yeah. Okay, so let me know if this feels like it resonates at all with you. Have you tried uh, this technique that I've done a few times and I've offered this to other people as well, where it's like, okay, today I'm gonna sit with it for five minutes. Today I'm gonna, the next day I'm gonna sit with 10, whatever. And then maybe, nope, the next day I'm sitting it with two minutes, whatever. And I'm just like allowing myself to kind of just see and gauge how long, but I'm, but I'm committed to doing it is kind of the, the crux of it for me of like I'm not gonna allow myself to avoid it anymore but I'm not gonna push my body past what it feels like it can do because I have love for for this right I have love I have so much love for me and so and and, and I'm not in any rush I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned over the years is like I used to feel like oh I gotta heal I gotta heal I gotta heal I gotta hurry I gotta hurry I'm an eternal being like I <laughs> like yes this physical body is going to die and transition at some point but there is no rush to like move through things and push through and whatever and push 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 like if I spend you know two minutes sitting with something that the day before I avoided awesome that's so awesome <laughs> um my vibe yeah i think we're waking up and being pushed through our shadows to be ready for what's coming there's a lot of that there's a lot of that amanda yeah we were talking about we were being pretty vulnerable i've had some anger pop up other people have been sitting with anger and uh, feeling a little bit low and kind of like all that stuff and yeah just a lot of those if you want to call it shadows whatever there's so many different uh, words choices with this and um and yeah Something that I, something that I test myself to see what I can do when I'm sitting with something that's uncomfortable, I I try to imagine that shadow as a friend, which sounds silly, right? It sounds kind of ridiculous, especially if you're in the throes of something. But I'm like, okay, can I like put a goofy hat on the head of the shadow? Can I like? put a fuzzy blanket around your shoulder. Can I like befriend you in some way that feels like I can sit with you longer where I am embracing you a little bit more than I did the day before? Um, so that is some of the visualization and the meditative work that I do is like being really creative and playful with it. Um, and that's kind of like the vibe of the, the stuff that I do. I get really, really creative with the type of imagery that comes in for me and also like for other people too, it like can seem a little bit silly, but sometimes it takes the like pressure off and it takes the kind of like heightened scary feeling off. It's like, oh, now my shadow has a fucking like twirly hat on. Like <laughs> it's way less intense with that. So <laughs> if that works for everyone, go for it. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of the book Atomic Habits. Ooh, I don't think I've read that. 
Do you remember who wrote it? I can also just Google it after this. I'm gonna write it down. This is what I like doing in these lives when people tell me like cool stuff like this. Y'all are teaching me a bunch um, and sparking me in a lot of ways too. So Atomic Habits, uh, Atomic Habits. Okay, sweet. Also, Amanda, thank you for the likes and the hearts and all that stuff. That's so sweet. Ginny! Hey, hey, hey. I think of it like a tree with branches. I'll decide to take it one branch at a time without pressure. Oh, of when? I love that visual. Becca, that's so cool. Yes, especially, I don't know about you, but like I'm really, I love nature and I love connecting with nature. And so like having the visualization of a tree, especially when you're doing shadow work, feels comforting to me. I like that. I like that. If I'm feeling particularly stuck in all of the ways that I normally would use aren't quite cutting it, I might just uh, use your your way of going about it and see if uh, some tree limb branches work by James Clear. Yes, the trees are nurturing. Yes. We did a, a tree energy exploration. Um, when was that? Was it last time? Amanda, if you're still in here, was it last time? Oh, hold up. I don't know if I paused it all, but I had to do something on my end. Um, yeah, if Amanda's still in here, did we connect with trees last time? Time also, this was something I was gonna bring up in this live. Time is so wonky, uh, especially the more you like mess with it, uh, like intentionally and are like, like kind of like, I mean, a lot of people have time blindness. That is a thing for a lot of people, but a lot of people are hyper focused on time as well. But I notice for myself that a week ago sometimes feels like a month or two. Like, yeah, things go by super fast or sometimes they're super elongated and it's like, oh my God, what is happening? But I think the last time we met for the energy exploration community gatherings, we connected with trees. I feel like that was our last one. And that was really fun. We like, I had everybody like go and connect with the tree um, over the weekend. And then we met on Monday. And we all shared what our experience was. And then we connected again. So from a distance and what does that feel like? And like um, what new things maybe came in was a very similar vibe, all of that stuff. So it was fun. That was just a very truncated version of what we did, but it was really, really fun. Trees are so wise and so helpful. <laughs> so, so helpful. Are y'all connected to trees or do you have any trees? in your area that you always love to like connect with. Everywhere I go, everywhere I stay, cause I travel a lot, there tends to be a tree that I like notice right when I arrive. And then it's like a constant like um, kind of connection when I'm in the area. And then as I'm leaving, I always say a goodbye before I go and just a thank you um, for holding space for me in the way that it did. Um, so yeah, it's always interesting. I never know what, what tree it's gonna be. And then I'll walk past and be like, hey, <laughs> hey. I tend to go towards the thickest boy in the woods. The thickest boy. <laughs> you really, I don't know if you're a tree hugger, Becca, but like, you really want to get your arms, <laughs> arms around that trunk. <laughs> yeah, I like doing that a ton. It's fun. Trees, uh, I do a lot of, tree meditations, which are uh, really, really healing for me, I've found. And I, yeah, I just enjoy like the different visuals I get when I sit with trees. It's different than when I'm not with them. It's not like totally, totally different, but I'm definitely feeling like I'm picking up on the specific kind of imagery that they're sending out. Yes, but I can never reach. <laughs> I know, like your your fingertips are quite touching on the other side. That's awesome. Ooh, okay. I don't. Can you all hear the music or no? I play it on my end just because I I dig having music going. This is Saint Finnegan. 
I have at least one or two of his songs on most of my playlists. Um, he's also on TikTok and he puts out a lot of music. Um, but yeah, very soothing and also very healing for my journey. So if anyone's up for new music um, that has some empowering, empowering vibes going on with it that I would highly suggest. Do y'all have any music suggestions? Amelia, if you're still in here, I know that you dig uh, Ingrid Michaelson. Do you have any other favorites that you'd suggest for people in this chat? Or anybody else who's in here? Becca, uh, Le, us, if you're in here, or Joshua. Um, we're just talking about different energy stuff. We were talking about crystals. We are talking about the different energies right now and how it's affecting us. Um, now I'm asking if there's any specific music that you listen to. I have like a whole, I, I love making playlists and I'm constantly finding new music that like hypes me up or gets me into a calm state. I've actually, when I was like staying up super late the past, week or two when I was like up for till like two, three in the morning, I was playing some very soothing meditative music, which typically I don't sleep to music. If anything, I'll listen to like white noise or something like, you know, just like um, wind or something like pretty steady. But I was finding the meditative calming music helpful um, as my body was resting. Yes, like background depends on the music vibe. Yeah. It's true. It's true. It's true. It really depends. Depends. Um, there are like, like, I'm not a purist of like, oh, I can only listen to this type of music, right? Like I, I'll listen to Chapel Roan like the best of them, <laughs> you know? And, um, and oh gosh, what are some other ones? That I've, been, I've been listening to Beach Boys. For whatever reason, Beach Boys came back into my awareness last week. And I was like, listening to Kokomo and like all those different songs about surfing and like, I don't know why, but they just were in it. So I was like driving down the street, windows down, just blasting the Beach Boys. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. It's so fun. But I also really like um, Sonny Holden. I interviewed him for the podcast that I put out different episodes every once in a while. And, um, Sonny Holden is a, I think he's 11 now, 11 or 12. He's a handpan player from Australia, the Gold Coast. And he is really good. And he basically just like picked up a handpan like when he was 10, nine or 10, and he immediately knew how to play it. One of those kiddos. So he was super fun to talk to. If anybody's interested in new music and especially like handpan music, I highly suggest Sonny Holden. Um, and he's just a fun kid to listen to talk to. He's so wise. He's just like so connected in. Um, this one is really good for frequency music. Yeah, yes, for sure, for sure. It is really, really, I find it's a lot of St. Finnegan stuff super soothing. Um, some of it can get pretty hyped too. There's a few songs like that. Um, but some of his albums I put on and I just listen to the whole thing because it like flows in from one song to the next and it's just so helpful. So helpful. Yes, yes, yes. I'm trying to think. Ooh, do y'all want to? Okay. Do you want to see how I do an Oracle card that's different than maybe how other people would do it on this app? Do, are y'all interested in that? It's the energy empowerment kind of edition of an Oracle card or a um, tarot. I, don't, I have my Oracle deck. And this is the Sacred Forest Oracle. That may or may not be backwards for you by Denise Lynn. But I am just, I am going to pull one for us right here and I'm gonna do it differently than a whole bunch just fell. I don't do it the traditional way, okay. That one was the one. I took a second to see, that one was the one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, first we're gonna look at the image. So I'm not gonna show the words. 
This is just the image. And I'm not gonna say this is what it means. I'm not gonna tell you this is what you should be feeling from it. An energy empowerment lens of like card pulls to me is very focused on the individual and your own energy field and what is coming up in your system. To me, that is what I use the cards full for. So like, yes, could I read the book that Denise put out with her deck? Of course I could, right? And that's legit too. Or I could go online and I look things up. But basically, I sit with a card and I'll see what's coming up. What are the very first things? If I have feelings, if I have thoughts, if I have memories, if I have any sort of like energy, like that's floating around that I'm now aware of, like in my system, what is that? So I'll look at the imagery first. And then what I do is then I look at the words and this might be backwards for you. So I'll read it. It says Aspen spirit courage. And then what comes up for you when you hear those words or when you read those words, when you hear Aspen spirit and courage, which I think is interesting. We were just talking about tree energy and this tree card came out with the Aspen spirit. Okay. So this is not about, Oh, I had some sort of notification pop up on my screen. So sorry about that. So for me, when I'm doing an energy empowerment work with somebody and they're very, very, very into being correct and right and they're fearful of being wrong, this is the type of work that I do with somebody. I'm having you look at the image. You're trusting what's coming up for you individually. There is no wrong answer for that. You know what comes up in your own system better than I ever could because I'm not in your body. And then when you look at the words, what's coming up then? Are you judging yourself thinking, oh, I didn't get that right? Or is it adding to some additional pieces that are coming up for you when you see these words? So that's the type of like energy empowerment stuff that I like to do with cards. I don't like to say, you should be feeling tree spirit and you should be feeling courage from this card, <laughs> right? It's mainly looking up and paying attention to what's going on in your own system and trusting that you know you more than anybody else could. And so it takes practice, it's like a muscle, right? Because we're so used to people telling us answers, especially on this app when people are constantly doing like card pulls and saying, this is what this means, and the right? But if you're trusting yourself and you're an empowerment kind of mindset, can I sit with a card, not look at any sort of meaning that anyone else has written about it, and trust that I'm getting exactly what I need in this moment. I just went up north to take pics with aspen trees. Let's go. I love synchronic synchronicities like that. That's awesome. I dig it. Yeah, it's just a different way to go about it, right? Like, do I use the books occasionally? Yes. Yes, I do, because I'm like, you know what? I want a different perspective. I wanna see if whatever was written in this book um, brings something up for me. But if it's not resonating and I've gotten really good at figuring out what feels in coordinates and what feels like, eh, that's not really fitting. But sometimes it's a word choice too. You ever notice that if you're reading a description of a card or just a description of anything in general and there's a word in there that brings something up for me. So like, it's really hard to see anything else because that one word triggers me in some way, <laughs> right? So sometimes it is just rephrasing something and, and then I'll do that too, I'll play with that as well. So I'll be reading, um, you know, something about a card and I'll be like, okay, I get the general vibe of what they're trying to say. For whatever reason, I have my own beliefs and things going on in my system right now with this word choice. I'm gonna shift it. If I shift it over here, yes, I'm able to hear that message. Okay, cool, and then, then I move forward with it, right? So it really just depends um, and what you choose to do with it and what feels good for you in your own system. Love the intuition development. I definitely don't read traditional either, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so many classes out there, right, that are telling you um, things have to be done a certain way and you should be sleeping with your deck when you first get it and, like, you should be gifted your first deck. And there's so many rules, right? And if it works for you and it feels 
empowering for you to do it that way, please, please do it. I mainly am not a fan of the shoulds, have tos, that type of thing. If it is open-ended, it's like, yes, this is something I practice. Maybe you would like to try it as well. That feels a little bit better for me. Um, but the shoulds and the have tos and and the kind of scare, fear thing that comes out sometimes with people with these practices and these tools, um, that doesn't feel aligned for me at this point. So I just go rogue and I do my own thing. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is I, I've actually committed to doing these once a week. I, it's so funny. This is another thing that I've been working through recently is resistance to scheduling and resistance to like boxing. That's kind of how I was, um, looking at it because I used to be so regimented in my schedule and the ways that I went about my day. And so I've like g swung the pendulum the other direction where I'm very loosey goosey, right? But sometimes having things that are like, this is consistent. I'm committed to doing this. I'm committed to going live. I'm committed to connecting with people in this way and having different conversations and being of service in this way and being sparked by people. Um, to me, that has been a growth point for me to like get me back into balance with some structure, but not boxy, if that makes sense. So I will, I'm committed to doing these on Wednesday nights and um, we'll see what form it takes. Cause I'm not committed to the format either. It can change. I might have people come on and be guests as well. I know Shirley was in here last time. She's an animal communicator and she, um, she wanted to do a live, so maybe we'll do that. And if anybody else is wanting to do a live, I think you have, if I remember correctly, I think you have to have a thousand followers to go live, which I think is kind of not great. Um, Cause that's more content for TikTok if they have it open to more people doing it, but whatever. Um, so if you have a thousand followers and you want to do a combo thing, let me know, let me know, let me know, and we can do that. All right, I think that is all I got for tonight. And I am just thankful, thankful anybody who joined or anybody who's watching this replay because these replays go on YouTube uh, the next day. So Thursday, this will be up. And uh, just thank you so much for joining and adding your perspectives into the comments and sharing your energy with me and me sharing my energy with you. I so appreciate it. And Becca, so lovely to see you again. Bye.